Hello YouTube. So today is day eight, roughly. Um, honestly, didn't write down exactly the day that I stuck a needle in my finger. Um, everything is going fine and well for one of my fingers, but my pinky, if you look at it, is all nasty and messed up. And that's because I started to reject the magnet in my pinky. So, for my health and for the health of the nerve endings in my pinky, I decided to remove the magnet. I might have removed it early, you know, somebody else might have waited two or three days, but I know the tip of my ring finger is still not healed, and it's been nearly two months. So, I'd rather pull it out early and try again instead of having to wait forever for my finger to heal back. So I decided to just pull it, um, and when I pulled it, there was lots and lots of green and white pus, so I assume there was infection. With that said, it needs to be stated that even with a medical professional with a medical grade coating magnet in a sterile environment, you still have about a 70% chance of rejecting your magnet. It's just the way that it goes. We don't know what we're doing. Nobody's done this. It's just trial and error, and you do what you gotta do. And at this point in time, almost nobody keeps their magnet past a year. Almost nobody. But that is because, yes, your finger may heal up nice and beautifully right afterward and everything be fine and dandy for six months, but then you do something stupid. You, you were helping your friend move and you dropped a box on your finger and your finger will start the reaction all over again. It will start with the swelling, the redness, the itching, the infection, the whole nine yards. So nine times out of ten you get your magnet pulled. Though there is quite a few people, uh, obviously not as, as many people who have it rejected, but there are some who have managed to keep their magnets in, I believe, three years. But at this point in time, it's... You should go into this procedure expecting it not to work. That's the only way I can put it. There is no other way. It's... You're dead if you don't, you're dead if you do. So, if you still decide that this is a good idea, which obviously I did, you need to be very informed about your decision. Now, there are a lot of things, a lot of variables in this procedure. Of course, you can't ever make anything perfectly sterile, though people have tried, you can't. I mean, even NASA, who builds all of their rovers in a perfectly clean room, it's sterile the whole nine yards, even when they're all done with their 1.3 billion dollar project, in the end, when they're all done, they realize, oh no, it still has contamination on it. We can't send it. Because you just can't make everything sterile. And when because you can't make everything sterile, you can't guarantee that there won't be an infection. With that stated, obviously doing it at home, by yourself, with and you yourself is, are not a professional, when it comes to, you know, if you're a doctor and you, you pull out hearts on a daily basis and put new ones in and you really do know what you're doing, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you probably have a better chance than any of us. And if you are a doctor and you do decide to do this, please write down your findings for the rest of us. But saying you do decide this, you need to find yourself good magnets. That is the key to not rejecting. You need to find magnets that have a safe coating. Nickel is not a safe coating. Zinc is not a safe coating. Silver, uh, it is a safe coating, but it has its drawbacks. Same thing with gold. It does have its drawbacks. Because of this, I chose to double coat. My magnets are coated first with gold, and then they were coated with parlene, which is a type of plastic. So, if there were any damage to the gold coating, the parlene would protect it. So, the, the likelihood that there's a hole in the parlene coating 
and the gold coating, which releases the niodinium, is smaller. So, do your research. Titanium's good, cer uh, ceramic's good, gold's good, parlene's good, uh, medical grade, silicone is good. There are options, but it may still fail. So, yeah, it sucks. And failure is something that you should expect. Uh, but, with all that said, as you can see, my finger is doing wonderfully. It looks exactly the same as my other finger. Can't even tell anything happened to it. It's fully healed. Yay. Now there's still... Let me see where it's at. There it is. There's still a dot right where the needle was inserted, but the magnet's way down here. So I'm really worried about it. Everything seemed to work out fine for me. It seems for me personally third time's the charm. But as we may find in some later updates, you know, when I, I do an update at one month or and my update at six months, my update at one year, we may find that this isn't true anymore. But at this current point in time, it seems like my procedure was a success. And because my procedure was a success and I have failed so many times, I wanted to have two fingers with magnets in it. I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to videotape it next time to show you guys how I did it. Let's see here. Public opinions. My goodness, there have been lots and lots and lots of very rude things stated to me in the past couple of days after I got my magnet implanted both by friends, families, co-workers, and strangers. So, everybody's got an opinion. And if you are a body modifier, then you're probably used to these things. You've had people walk up to you and be like, Dude, why the hell do you think it's a good idea to put a three-inch hole in your ear? Because I want to. You know, um, I also have a lot of people in my family who are like, If you know that this isn't going to work out, what'd you do it for? Because I wanted it. I want my magnet. And even if it doesn't work out, at worst, I stabbed myself in the finger with a magnet once when I was 20 years old. I really doubt that's something I'm going to remember or complain about for the rest of my life. But if it works, I may possibly, I'm not saying it's a good chance, but I possibly could keep this magnet my entire life. And that makes me very happy. So... I'm starting to gain my sensitivity. My nerve endings have done a very good job at reforming. I can feel the microwave very, very easily right now. I can also feel my speaker coil that I built. So you can make my magnet into a speaker. You just stick it in your ear, plug this in, hold it up, or wear it around your neck, whatever you're going to do, and poof, you have earphones. So, that's all I have right now. Um, I can't feel whether or not there's electric current running through a power line yet. Um, obviously, I can't feel something like which way is north. But big things I can feel. I can definitely feel the microwave. I can definitely, definitely feel an induction cooktop. If I'm even within four inches of an inductive, uh, with my bad, four feet within an inductive cooktop, I know it's there. But other than that, I can't really tell that there's anything going on with my finger. But I wanted to show you guys the lovely fun of having your finger turn into a speaker. I thought those of you who may one day want to actually do this to yourself, maybe you'd like to actually see how everything works. So I plug it in. It's plugged into just my cell phone. And... Obviously, um, you don't hear anything. So, you don't hear anything from my coil. Nothing. I don't hear anything from my finger. Where's the hole? There it is. Nothing. But, let me turn it all the way up. Make sure it's as loud as possible on both ends.
I hate 9 volt batteries. I don't even know why I decided to use 9 volt batteries. I should have used AA batteries. It'd be easier. But regardless. Poof. Let me make sure it's working. Yep. So, like I said, I'm gonna put my finger on the microphone and you hear and you'll hear nothing. Then I take the coil and my finger. So, I don't know, I honestly won't know whether or not until I'm already editing this video whether you heard that or not, but I'm pretty sure you heard it because I sure as hell felt it. So, I know there was noise being made. So, that's my update so far. Um, I needed to correct some misinformation that I gave to you guys in another video. I had said that it is okay to put your hand in cold water. Uh, apparently, I'm wrong about that. Yes, it is perfectly okay to put your hand in cold water, but you should wear a glove. Because the water could possibly have contaminations which could infect your open hole. And moisture apparently really, really screws up healing wounds. So... You know, there were quite a few people whose magnets were rejected because they swam a lot when they were wait waiting for their magnets to heal. It was summer or whatever. So keep that in mind. Wear a glove when you use cold water or hot water. That, poof, I've, I'm absolved of my misinformation. Um, if you can't do this on your own, some of us can, some of us can't. There, go to biohack.me and click the forum page and read through everything you can find on magnets. Of course, biohack.me is a website for more than just finger implants, but it has a very, very large community of magnet peoples. I, I don't know, I think we're called grinders or something, I don't know, there's some name for it but go on to that website there are meetings there are gatherings there are quote professionals who have been doing specifically magnet implants for the past couple of months or years and they specifically learned how to do it and they're probably a little more trustworthy than somebody who's never done it I personally chose to do it on my own because I don't trust people. I really don't. I, I trust myself. Even when I got my ears pierced, I went to a professional, paid him like $20 to stick needles through my ears, and I had an infection within two or three days. I had to pull out the ear piercing, and in the end, my ears healed shut, and I understood as an eight-year-old. Um, maybe other people don't know what's best for me. So I pierced my ears later on back when I was maybe a 10 year old I sterilized it and you know just took a needle and put it in fire and then washed all of the black shit off the needle with alcohol and then iodined my ear and then stuck it and that worked I didn't have my ears didn't have any problems after that I also had the same thing happen with my belly ring. I went to a professional to go get my belly ring pierced, and they screwed it up. In the end, it rejected. I did it myself, worked the first try. Mind you, the belly button thing, I had it pierced by three separate professionals over a three-year period, and all three times it rejected. But the one time I did it by myself, it worked. So, I'm willing to bet that the same thing may be true when it comes to m implanting magnets in my hand. And because I had tried it on one finger before, I was fairly confident that I could go ahead and do it to these two. And out of these two, which were done the exact same time with the exact same method, literally I had two 12-gauge needles, two 14-gauge needles, two magnets, and all the stuff in between. 
they were done identically, they were done at the same time, they were cleaned identically, they were anesthetized identically, there was no difference. Obviously, since they were on the same hand, they're also experiencing likely the same trauma and environment. So, that just goes to show, yes, I'm not a medical professional, I don't know what I'm doing, but even when they're done exactly the same, there is no difference between the way that they're done. The outcome is different. Like I said at the beginning, even if it's done perfectly, you have about 70% chance of it rejecting. I had three fingers implanted. I have a 30% chance of any one of these fingers not rejecting. Do the math. So, it looks like math wins. I, I was successful. And I'm probably going to be posting... I'm a little nervous about doing it again just because of how much pain it is just to heal. Because the first 48 hours are the worst. So, it, it might be a week, it might be two, it might be a month. I don't know how long it's going to take me before I grow another pair and decide to do this again. But, at this current point in time, it seems that my procedure was a success. Um, I'm very happy with my magnet. And I would definitely recommend it to anybody who, you know, maybe you have a bad immune system who doesn't do anything so it won't react so violently. Maybe if you had AIDS, maybe implanting the magnet wouldn't cause a reaction, you know, because there's no immune system to react. But then again, if you have AIDS, you probably don't want to be cutting yourself. Then again, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's absolutely anything else. Nope! That's all I can really think of. So, I think we're good. If you have any questions or comments, of course, you can always reach me at the, in the comments below. And as I mentioned in other videos, you can also find me on biohack.me. No, it's just biohack.me. There's no dot com. And I'm on the magnet implanted list. I'm the only Sarah there. So you'll find me. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was at least slightly helpful to some of you. <laughs>